Welcome into the Chiefs Report. I am Harrison Graham, back with another Chiefs rumors and news video for you guys. Let's get the latest on a possible Patrick Mahomes extension. What does that timetable look like? Well, the report coming from Tom Pelissero is that uh, after the draft, which is kind of what we've been hearing for a while now, that something could be in the works after the NFL draft once the Chiefs have a better idea of what their roster looks like, not only moving forward this season, but for the next couple of years as well. Mahomes is set to make $5.3 million in 2020, and the Chiefs do have a little bit of leverage because they have the fifth-year option for 2021, but I don't think they're going to uh, go a super uh, unnecessary route and create a battle between the two parties. Both sides want to get a deal done, and a deal will get done, and he will become the highest-paid player in the NFL. Here's a deeper dive into uh, some of the details here from Tom Pelissero saying, quote, my understanding is that the timing on that is still something that is probably going to happen after the draft as they see how the roster settles and figure out how they can build a dynasty around their superstar. Obviously, their superstar being quarterback Patrick Mahomes. So lots of things to still uh, unfold here. The Chiefs still have some needs to fill. We'll talk about the draft a little bit later on as well. But the guy is going to get paid a lot and for good reason because in 31 career games, he has played at an extraordinarily high level at such a level that no other quarterback has played this well 31 games into their career. Almost 10,000 yards, 76 touchdowns, a passer rating of almost 110 he has been sensational for the Kansas City Chiefs since being drafted in 2017. I can't wait to watch this guy for the years to come because he is going to be fun to watch. I want you guys to do something for me. You guys want a mailbag? Want another Q&A? Like this video and we can do one for you guys if we get enough likes. I, I went to bosses and I was like, hey, I had fun on the last Q&A and they are like, oh, well, we need 300 likes to justify one to do another one. So if we get 300 likes on this video, which didn't ask in a ton, we had a video that did 700 likes recently. So if we get 300, I will do another Q and A. Then remember, use hashtag chiefs in the comments to ask me your questions. We'll do a mailbag very, very soon, but we got to get 300 likes on this video. So go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and we'll get a mailbag coming your way later this week. You look at Patrick Mahomes' accolades in the early part of his career, it's been terrific. He was the MVP in 2018, first-team All-Pro that year, Offensive Player of the Year that year as well. And obviously this past year did uh, miss a couple of games with injuries, but Super Bowl champion, Super Bowl MVP, he was terrific, and he continues to get better and better. And what's a really good sign from any young quarterback is how they play when the lights shine the brightest. He's been awesome in the playoffs. That completion percentage is a bit down because he was only about 51% in the AFC title game a couple of years ago, but he still threw for over 300 yards and three touchdowns in that loss to the Patriots. Almost 300 yards a game, 13 touchdowns against just two picks, rating at over 106. He's 4-1. and one. He's a Super Bowl champion. Went to the AFC title game. Should have won that game in his uh, first year as a starter if D4 didn't line up offsides. He's been awesome. This guy's going to play in big games for many years to come, and I fully expect him to play at a very, very high level. Now, as far as his contract goes, how much money per year will Patrick Mahomes get? I'm setting the over-under at $40 million, type O for over $40 million. Type U for under $40 million. Let me know down in the comment section. I think that's around the area. Maybe he takes something like 38 So maybe you're typing your U for under, but it's going to be a lot. He's going to become the highest paid player in the NFL, which means he's going to get at least $36 million per season. I'm going to make this the pinned comment, so go ahead and scroll on down and answer this question. Keep it rolling here on uh, the Chiefs report. Could Kansas City be trading out of round one? Some chatter's increasing, and if you look at history, uh, this seems fairly likely. Chiefs only have five draft picks this year, as you guys know. Trading down makes sense to get extra draft picks. Patrick Mahomes in 2017 is Kansas City's only first-round pick since 2015 when they took Marcus Peters. Brett Beach, he, he, he trades picks. He traded up for Mahomes. He's willing to trade down uh, for extra picks. We've seen that since he's been this team's general manager. So it would not surprise me to get some extra draft capital in the middle rounds for the Kansas City Chiefs. You look at what they have this year, one pick in each of the first five rounds. No sixth round pick, no seventh round pick. So if you trade down from round one, maybe pick up an extra second and that extra fourth or something like that, I think that could be worthwhile to get some extra volume here 
in the draft because the Chiefs don't have a ton of high leverage needs. They do need a cornerback really badly, and they could use a linebacker. After that, I, you know, you just add some depth. You know, if you want to get an extra rotation running back, you could add a guard slash center if you want to, extra pass rusher. But Chiefs don't have a ton of major needs, just a couple with cornerback and linebacker, as we have outlined on several shows over the past couple of weeks. So what do you guys think? Should the Chiefs trade out of the first round? Type Y for yes, type in for no. Obviously, the 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 obvious answer is you wait and see how the draft plays out. No team enters a draft saying we're automatically trading down. That's not how it works. But unless there's a just obvious pick at 32, I would actually be kind of surprised if they did not trade down from round one. So I would say there's a good chance that the answer is yes. But go ahead and let me know. Type Y for yes, type in for no down below. And while you're doing that, why don't you take advantage of this sweet Chiefs hat sale we've got going on right now. It's chatsports.com slash Chiefs hats. If you use promo code PINCH, that's P-I-N-C-H, it's right there on your screen, you can get 25% off a variety of sweet Chiefs hats. We're only showing you some of them. we got snapbacks, curved bill hats. You've got the mesh back uh, like this one, which I really like. Some of the Super Bowl hats are on sale as well. Remember, here's the link, chatsports.com slash Chiefs hat. That'll be in the comments in the description. And once you get to the website, use promo code PINCH when you shop, and you can go ahead and get 25% off all of Chiefs hats. All right, this is kind of fun. The NFL uh, released the all-decade team yesterday, and I just kind of wanted to outline some of the Chiefs who made the squad. Uh, eight players in the NFL were unanimous selections, including Tom Brady and a few others. No real surprise there. All decade from 2010 to 2019, obviously, uh, are the people who qualified uh, there. Five Chiefs players were selected. Here they are. A uh, couple on offense, a couple on defense, one on special teams. Travis Kelsey, LaShawn McCoy. Some of you guys are probably like, Sean McCoy. Well, yeah, he did most of his damage with the Bills and with the Eagles. I wouldn't say what he did with Kansas City last year is why he made it. Uh, Tyree Kill made it as a punt returner. Eric Berry made it as a safety. And then Tyron Matthew made it as just a defensive back. Uh, obviously, he's more of a roamer. So they had a couple of just DB selections. So those are the five uh, selections for the NFL All-Decade team from the Kansas City Chiefs. So I, uh, you know, there were a few uh, maybe uh, submissions here or guys who were left out. Justin Houston, I thought, could have made a case. Maybe even a Jamal Charles, who was really good in the early parts of the 2000s. But overall, you know, I think these are worthwhile selections in the end. Now, moving forward to the next decade, as we are in 2020, who do you guys think will be on the 2020 NFL All-Decade team? What Chiefs players? Obviously, Patrick Mahomes. I, look, you could have made an argument for the last decade, to be honest. Uh, MVP, Super Bowl champion, first-team All-Pro. Uh, you know, I, I understand why they left him off, but another decade of him playing, he will definitely be on there. Maybe Travis Kelsey is on the 2020 team as well. Tyree Kill, perhaps. Tyron Matthew. Go ahead. Let me know, predict who you guys think will make the next all-decade team from the Kansas City Chiefs. Quick reminder, use hashtag Chiefs for our upcoming mailbag. I'll answer as many as possible, but we have to get 300 likes on this video. So like the video, use hashtag Chiefs to get your questions on the show. I'll answer as many as I can, assuming we do get 300 likes from today's video. Okay, last rumor here. Let's talk about Matt Breida, the 49ers running back. There's some chatter that... He could be the odd man out in the 49ers' backfield. Didn't get a lot of playing time down the stretch uh, last year for San Francisco. Fell out of uh, their graces for whatever reason for Kyle Shanahan and that offense. And uh, you got to keep in mind that Jarek McKinnon might be back for San Francisco. He's missed a couple of years with injuries. They paid him a lot of money a couple of years ago. If he returns, he could be back in the fold. Now, the 49ers did place a second-round tender on uh, Brita. No one's going to sign him while that tender is still applied. So it would wait until he got released by the 49ers if that indeed happened later on. I like Brita. I think he would fit to the Chiefs' offense because he's a good pass catcher. He has good speed. Uh, you can use him as a third-down back type. Now, you do have Darwin Thompson, so you got to keep that in mind as well. But he's kind of a do-it-all back. He can return kicks as well. I like Matt Brita in his speed. If the 49ers were to release him, say, in training camp, I think the Chiefs and several other teams would have some interest. If the 49ers cut Brita, should the Chiefs sign him? What do you think? Type S for sign, type P for pass. I think they should certainly consider it. Uh, we'll see what happens in the end. I'm not convinced uh, Jarek McKinnon can get healthy, but let me know what you guys think. Type S for sign or type P for pass.
when you look at the depth chart for the 49ers, they can't keep all these guys. I think Mostert and Coleman are locks. If McKinnon's healthy, I think he stays on the team. So they've invested a lot in him. He has not played a down for the 49ers yet. Uh, that could mean Breed is out. Jeff Wilson Jr. is also in the mix as well. You're not keeping five running backs. You'll probably keep four. Uh, McKinnon does what Breida does, but he's just a little bit better at it. So what's the point of keeping both of them? I think Matt Breida could be the odd man out. And if you were to plug him in to the Chiefs running back depth chart, I think he would have a role on this team. Maybe that means Darrell Williams is the odd man out moving forward. Elijah McGuire and uh, Mike Weber also on the Chiefs roster. But all in all, I'm comfortable with the Chiefs half at running back. Hey, they want to pursue Matt Breida if he becomes a free agent. I am all in for that.